Hello and welcome to a Smurd P video and today we are looking at Immortal X-Men issue 4 and this is Noto's variant cover with the White Queen on the front and we begin with a monologue from the White Queen first it is about uh, sleeping in diamond form she has is it a defensive thing in case she gets physically or psychologically psycho Psychic attack. Oh my goodness. That was awful. Anyway, <laughs> I can get my words out. I still haven't got my words out. Um, no, it is about vanity. Because when she is in diamond form, she will live a little bit longer. Kudos. I wish I could go into diamond form. And then we get we get in this uh, these forts, etc. We, we hear some of the darkest times where she just does things um, to punish people for the sake of it. Um, and then we also go back to her sort of remembrance of her relationship with Scott and how she, how Scott sees her and how she isn't quite up there with Jean and how she gave everything to Utopia and it literally destroyed her. And in a way it did. It destroyed all of them. Um, but off the back of that, off the back of... Um, then finding the Avengers and the Phoenix and hope, you know, um, Cyclops was still right to me. And I, I'm one of those people that I absolutely loved the Scott and Emma show. It was much better than um, what would have continued with Jean if she was alive. Um, and I'm still not sure whether they're all just doing whatever the hell they want these days. I really don't know. Um, and it's not been clearly defined as such it's just it's almost sort of hinted at if that makes sense like immortality in these changes have made them think well you know what we're gonna live for a long time let's do what the hell we like it still doesn't make sense i feel like if scott is with gene he is dedicated to gene and that's how it should be instead of her perhaps hooking up with wolverine maybe he's mellowed i don't know um, anyway, one thing is clear is the future of Krakura because of what she's realized that Magneto and Xavier were up to with Moira. She does not intend to let any children get harmed. And this all stems back to New X-Men where 16 million mutants died. It all stems back to that and her failing and of course being manipulated by Nova to turn into Diamond form and survive as well. Uh, so, what's the worst that can happen? We get the, the reveal of Immortal X-Men and she's covered in blood. Now that will be explained in a minute. So Kieran Gillen is the writer. Now I'm going to be honest, he is turning out to be one of my favorite writers on the next title right now because I'm absolutely loving this run. Uh, we got Michelle Bandini on the art. We've got David Corell on the color art. And we got Clayton Cowes, who seems to be the ultimate letterer at the moment. And Tom Miller and Jay Bowen on design. So, which is pretty cool. And then we get an homage to the legendary Neil Adams, 1941 to 2022. Um, rest in peace, sir. You are a legend to all X fans and Marvel fans and probably other fans out there. So the Hellfire Gala happens. Emma Frost is meeting with his ambassador who he, he wants to understand his immortality and about sharing, etc. And um, Emma Frost refers to about um, the 60 mu million mutants are dead. 60 million mutants haven't risen yet. 60 million mutants will happen before we even dream of sharing this information with humans. Now you gotta remember there's lots of elements that come with resurrection. You've got the five that um, make it happen. You've got Sinister and his genetics of mutants. You've then got the Cerebro which captures memories and last moments of people to transfer back into these bodies etc so there is a whole process so to extend it to humans is um 
not impossible, but a massive feat compared to doing mutants. And they haven't even got around to the 16 million that have Paris, etc. Um, so his response is that he understands the position and realistic and you got limited resource and you know maybe you share that with some of the leaders and we can grow this to be bigger which gives her thought and he says you've made such deals before to um ensure the majority accepts it because that's what they did with this this drug originally they shared it to give humans a little bit longer life to get their buy-in to crack cohen happening that's what it was about so this is another similar deal. We've seen a deal on Mars um, as well with um, them terraforming it, terraforming it and then going out to the universe and saying, hey, we're here and we offer you this to sort of accept us. That's how it, they sort of done it. So it is a bribe, essentially. It is a bribe. Um, then we get this moment where sheep's blood is thrown on Emma Frost and uh, X-Force coming in a little bit late there, X-Force, um, but they are there. And ultimately, it was, her husband's died. And seeing that the humans, can, the mutants can resurrect is, uh, is painful for them. So painful for humans, you know, having to deal with that death. Uh, so it all starts changing where they're in the council meeting. So this is after the Hellfire Gala. So if you haven't read the Hellfire Gala, uh, Scott and Emma Frost have some exchanges uh, about A, Sinister, and B, about Professor Xavier, Moira, and Eric. They they share between them in the background, and that's, that's interesting. I like that because I feel like those two together are the ones that would keep everybody else honest. That's what they do. They keep people honest. That's what they've ever done, which is which is grand. So Sinister is up for having access to mutants, humans' DNA to be able to assist in giving them resurrection, in particular leaders, because in his mind that gives the mutants some sort of power, etc. Uh, Professor Xavier receives a psychic note: somebody has taken human growth hormone and then they've killed themselves they've done this in the hope that they are considered a mutant and can be resurrected as a human and then it so this is the ramifications of this story of scott which we're not seeing in the main x-men title we are seeing in here which um which i like it because i think if there was no ramifications no follow-up that whole story being blown out there would have meant nothing. So I like that. Um, I like that it's happened. So X says we can't be blamed for humanity's stupidity. Then Kurt tries to go down the being Kurt. We should give them empathy and, you know, support and sympathy, etc. And then um, Mac oh, Mystique pops in saying, you know, you sure you should be on the mutant council with that? That's exactly why he's there, because he does that bit. The the human, the mutant element, the emotional bit. He comes in and says, we should be thinking about these. And then sure says, you know, don't be so pandant, don't be pandant, pedantic to Raven. And whether we give a damn or not, the public are looking at us. This is a PR mess and anyway emma jumps in and says this is where we stop i need to share this with you and i didn't think this was going to happen so quickly i felt like this was going to be kept quite a little bit longer but she shares the memories from x-men 11 and 12 where we get that shock discovery that mr sinister is being um working with orchis as dr status for all this time and uh, once again, um, I thought this was going to be kept secret a little bit rather than be blown out there. But we get the confirmation that this person claimed to be the real Nathaniel Essex and not the clone we have in front of us, 
with sharks this sinister. Um, and let's remember when they went up to Sinister, um, they asked one of them who was believed to be the leader and then he did come in and kill that one. So it makes every sense that he could have been a clone. It's, it was quite an obvious thing, I think. My mind, of course, only Charles and Eric went to meet him, if I remember correctly. Back in the Powers of X, I believe. Maybe issue six. It could be wrong. So um, he uh, teleports out, leaving an even stronger sense of brimstone for um, the others to do. He takes some tablets and boom, he has extra, extra... Uh, Sinisters popping up everywhere out of him, etc. They just literally just jump out, which is brilliant. And there's one going, they're all going, I'm Spartacus, until one goes, I'm Brian. So, congratulations, Brian, for being alive. So, Destiny meets her. She's not there to fight, though. She is there just to say to him, Don't be a coward. In we'll understand that bit in a minute. So, Mystique says she couldn't stop him. Um, she didn't try to stop him, she just said those words, Don't be a coward. So, it's it's judgment day for sinister and uh rather than work it out he's trying to escape so he goes to this moira clone with the attempt to kill her and then he remembers these words and that's when he says perhaps he shouldn't do you've said those words you know something he could have easily this could have easily been the moment from the last issue where he resets everything to try again. But instead, no, he, uh, he, he decides I'm gonna try and survive this. So he gives himself some, some DNA and he, you know, he feels ready to face the music, etc. That's what he thinks. Oh, and Oscar Wilde may be a mutant apparently. Uh, <laughs> so he's ready for his close up, which is, um, Great, so he comes out to see them and, and talk to them and try to clear his name. And, um, you know, because they could still work with this Nathaniel. There's, this Nathaniel hasn't done anything wrong other than perhaps being a clone. That's the only thing that he could have done. So, but before that happens, he disappears. He's not dead, he's not been killed, he disappears. And this is... Um, leads to Sinister being miss missing, and it leads to um, the Avengers, X-Men, Externals event. But yes, this is going to roll into another event. I've already done an X-Men event this week, and um, I was terribly disappointed. Um, so, Emma starts thinking about uh, Destiny, telling us that this war was happening, and how she believes that that is connected etc and that means that destiny actually really does believe in crack cola and it also makes her realize that something is uh awfully sad so she's still sleeping in dying form and she's uh acting like she's gonna get old and the problem with tele telepathy you can make anyone believe whatever you want and then you can't make yourself believe that. So even if you, uh, and this is quite true, this is true in life, and this is what gets me. And Kieran's got me again, I tell you. He's got me again, damn him. Um, it, it's, it was the same with the last issue. Um, Emma Frost goes out of her way to, to create this persona with everybody. She puts on this front, this massive face, this massive thing. Uh, but inside, she is just vulnerable just like everybody else and she shared that vulnerability with scott so you know she does share it with certain people but she doesn't trust enough of them to share it etc and that is like most people in life most people in life are like that they were put on this front just to survive that's what it is it's survival techniques and some people will be lucky they'll get to go home and spend time with loved ones and let themselves be who they really are. Let themselves be a little bit vulnerable, you know, have a cry, have a hug, do all those things. And, you know, that's what got me about that statement because 
even if you are this amazing person on the outside, inside you know who you really are. And you have to look at yourself and say, sometimes, am I betraying myself as the right person? Maybe I should be open, but sometimes opening ourselves is hard as well because when we're vulnerable, sometimes people take advantage of that as well. So it's it, it's a fine line. And I think everybody does it. Everybody does it in life. Um, you know, I know people that um, seem like they're really happy and stuff on the outside. And then you find out that they're seeing a counsellor because they're struggling. And you never knew they were struggling because that's what they do. They hide it from you. And because they didn't want to be vulnerable with you. So um, it's sometimes it, it's nice that Kieran can actually take real life sometimes and, and manage to fit it into these stories. You know, last issue we had the fact that Destiny is going to lose the love of her life. Yes, it may be um, through some X-Men adventure. Um, but in real life, there will be people in life um, that husbands, wives, girlfriends, daughters that are terminally ill. And they know that's going to happen. And they've got to deal with that while they're trying to keep life happening until they're gone. And that's what Destiny is doing there. And Emma Frost is um, putting her front on there. And then we get this quote from uh, Lewis Corral, Through the Looking Glass. So to the looking glass world, it was Alice that said, I've a set a scepter in hand, I have a crown on my head. Let the looking glass creatures, whatever they be, come and dine with the Red Queen, the White Queen and me. The end. Which felt appropriate to say that, by the way. Um, <laughs> I love this issue. I love Kieran's writing. Um, I hate the fact that he keeps getting me on that last page. <laughs> um, but he does, and that that's what makes comics um, important. My daughter says that Comics are an art form. I always say to her that, no, it's a story. And sometimes these characters and these stories, they mean something more and in your heart. And I'm getting a bit deep here, but this is why I read X-Men, because to me, they mean it means everything to me, X-Men. I love their world. I love reading them. They got me through some tough times as a kid. And... I still enjoy them now. The bad, the good, the ugly, the beautiful, you know, it's, it's a soap opera um, with powers and it's great. I love it. So anyway, I hope you liked my video. Got a bit deep at the end. <laughs> Jenny, I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts on this issue in particular. Um, Immortal X-Men is one of my favorite X titles right now. So um, I'm going to continue doing this and at the beginning, I wasn't sure if I was going to do this, but now I'm hooked. I'm completely hooked by this series. So uh, take care of yourselves. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. That would be great. Um, thank you to those that are subscribed and watch my videos. I do appreciate you folks. Make sure you look after yourself. Very important these days. And as always, embrace geekiness. Take care. Goodbye.